So it says, the nanny star, Fran Drescher, <laughs> uh, SAG after president, blasts vaccine mandates as infringement on body sovereignty and above all else, freedom. She what revealed it in a TikTok. Uh, yeah, let's watch. Before we get started, let's just watch the TikTok first. And it's, it's really funny because it's like her voice is like the most distinct part about her. And it just it shines through. So to think that every human on the planet can take one vaccine is ludicrous. <clears throat> and to make that one vaccine the criteria for who is allowed to work travel, dine, go to theater, et cetera, yes, is shocking. an infringement on the Disabilities Act, the Freedom of Religion Act, and body sovereignty. We as a nation must be very careful that fear does not turn into fascism. <clears throat> when equal citizens stop being equal, when cards must be presented to identify whether you are included or excluded, we stand at a tipping point of an America I no longer recognize. And even though I myself am vaccinated, I must applaud Disney for taking the position not to vaccine mandate their sets any longer. <sighs> the problem with discrimination is that there will always be good people who justify it because of an extreme condition. But it is those times especially when we must fight even harder to protect the sanctity of freedom for all and never succumb to an us versus them mentality. It's like the, it's like the two it's like two, the last two years didn't happen. No, I feel like she is like has she been in a coma and she is just Here's, catching up on the news chronologically. And I forgot about this before yeah. we started the show. Remember what she just said? I want to point to, to this article. I don't have it up here. Rockman Dunbar loses disparate impact claim in lawsuit against Disney for discrimination over vaccine mandate that led to mm. Reno or to nine one one exit. So, so thank Disney you, is late Disney. to yeah pulling the plug on their mandates. I don't know why that would be cause for celebration this late in the game. And people have been calling on Fran Drescher to uh, make one statement you know, on, on one side or the other for over a, a year. Since she took off, since she took the head yeah. of the presidency. It's so also like this tweet from Bra Bradley Whitford was asking, why is SAG-AFTRA not demanding that all productions require proof of vaccination for all set personnel where their members are working in the middle of a deadly pandemic? And where do membership first and Unite for Strength stand on the subject? So... <sighs> This this was from August 2021. Yeah. That's when the issue was actually relevant and yeah. being debated. So she waited until it would no longer have consequences for her and her platform to speak on this. I, I also enjoy the... Remember, they've suddenly shifted the meaning of fascism to mean right wing, which we know that uh, historically it's not. Which that, isn't the only reason something can be bad. Yes. So <laughs> so they've suddenly shifted that term to mean right wing. So now she's like, it should, we should be careful that we don't slip into fascism, but we know who were the ones the most gung-ho about mandates and vaccination requirements the other funny fact about this is that she supported hillary clinton uh multiple times obama she herself is yes. vaccinated also and, so she uh, didn't face consequences for resisting these mandates when they were being put in place she also is uh which also she, took away the urgency of her she didn't need yeah. to ever address it other than the fact that she held this position and theoretically needed to represent people like it had no bearing on her life, really. She, she also mentioned in 2017 that she's a, she's a gung-ho anti-capitalist in Hollywood. That's I mean, the, the, I'm all for diversity of opinions, I guess. The cognitive what, what else would we expect? Uh, also, but SAG like, hasn't cares. She probably benefits from capitalism. Well, no, no, she does. Right, she's, of she's course. from Hollywood, which is uh, among the most capitalist industries in the entire world. That's uh, what I mean. Like, she doesn't know what she's talking about really like she doesn't examine how she makes her money and in fact she gets to make statements like i'm anti-capitalist because she is so financially secure so it's like i said this is a year ago this would have been a very brave stance to even a year ago is like like two years ago right when this started and you wanted to actually point out that you believed in this stuff even i would say a year ago is fair like right after it started uh, people are running around with, like chickens with their heads cut off. Nobody really knows what's going on. But a year in, 
in 2021, you have a, the lay of the land. The information's out there. Whether you choose to seek it or not is not our responsibility. It's your job as the head of a, of a big union to, to get the most information you need to help make the best decisions for things like this. They didn't go get the information. They didn't look to, to figure out what was going on. They trusted the science the science and they and they just went with whatever the news told them now as reports have come out uh, and things have pushed back on the efficacy of vaccines now they want to play as if they're making a brave stance in something that's a year too late Mm -hmm. but SAG has never required its members to my knowledge to be vaccinated in order to be part of the union but they're still not speaking on it when studios are requiring exactly. productions to enforce those mandates. So it says Disney recently dropped vaccine mandates on 12 TV productions on which it is the lead studio. The Hollywood Reporter confirmed on Monday. The productions were notified last week that vaccines were no longer required on zone A of the production. Uh, it, what's funny about this is I still see the photos of people on sets and all the actors have no masks on and all of the pauper regular people working behind the scenes who do all the actual heavy lifting are the ones that have to be muzzled and probably dying to get some actual oxygen in their lungs. So Hollywood is still lagging behind other industries yes. with holding on to these COVID era policies for dear life, Which, both masks and vaccines. And so they, is she working on anything with Disney? Like why now? Um, she, she's, this is just is her upper, response as the head of SAG. She's to, just uh, like giving yeah. them a little But why? Like applause. what does it do for her? She doesn't need to applaud them. She hasn't applauded them. She could have stayed neutral on this issue. I mean, as much as like theoretically we could have hailed her as someone who's brave and sort of speaking up for actual Oh, I will values. not herald her she, for anything. Sorry. If she came out like a year ago and was like, even though I'm vaccinated, I don't think you should make it a requirement for work. Like she didn't do that. But she also didn't say like, yes, we should vaccinate people. Like why break mm -hmm. your neutrality after all this time? Yeah. To uh, me, it means that like she must have something going on with Disney. As a, uh, uh, you might know more about this than me. Like is it, would this specifically usually be something that a, a union president would speak heavily on? Like vaccines. I mean, well, in general, like would a, would a, it's like union presidents represent unions, right? So like anything that goes on that affects their, who they're representing, the employees, they could speak on. So like if they were... Would neutrality usually be the, the norm in a situation like this? I mean, it just like depends, yeah. right? Well, they probably like deferred to subsidiarity. to do with uh, employment, they could speak on, but they may not. Just like an electrical union, their president may take a stance on an issue that's affecting some people, but not the yeah. entire contingency. Like she could have chosen to speak out, but... She didn't have to yeah. unless pushed by her constituents, but presumably most of those people got vaccinated. It is Hollywood after all. Like, why now? That's my question. And I, I want to point out that she mentions religious. She, she mentioned religion in that, in that statement. And what happened was Rockman Dunbar, who got fired for basically, he tried to file uh, multiple like exemptions and Hollywood was like, the, the like, Disney was like, no. Mm -hmm. You're you're not getting these exemptions. How did Letitia Wright go about? I don't getting know. exempted. Uh, that that might have been d different because they were filming uh, in other countries, whereas uh, the show is filming mm -hmm. in the U.S. It's possible that like a lot of shows moved to New Zealand be, or started working in New Zealand because of relaxed measures. Wouldn't New Zealand have even stricter um, rules about that though? Uh, no, sh New Zealand had really strict migration rules, so you could not go to New Zealand, and there were lots of heavy uh, lockdown restrictions, but. I think they actually, from what I've read about it, were not as intense about the vaccine because the idea was oh. like they, they could keep everyone who was sick away. They were one of the last countries to report a COVID case. So okay. he, he was in a, he was for a church called the Church of Universal Wisdom, which just sounds like Heaven's Gate to me. What do I know? But uh, just, a little creepy sounding. A little creepy sounding. Sound. You don't like, have universal wisdom. Like it seems like something you find in like a, like a strip mall. <laughs> <laughs> like the, you know, it's got the little, the, it's got the, like the pull about sign out, outside okay. there next to like an, a liquor store in an empty building space. <laughs> But the, so the, he was trying to file exemptions based on religious beliefs. Yeah, it, it, he and says, uh, I, I don't know if I agree that you even need to have a religious conviction in order to be exempted. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if this is an issue of bodily sovereignty, that's a secular matter, and if it's about your ability to work and do your job your medical decisions don't have anything to do with that. Yeah. Well, and atheism's on the rise in America. So presumably if we make it, well, it has to be a religious exemption. We are forcing a lot of people who may disagree with it to go without options, right? Like yeah. it's your conviction no matter what.
theoretically opting out of religion is this should offer you the same protection as somebody who has the freedom of religion. So it says on belief uh, on information and belief, Disney has a history of racial discrimination and Mr. Dunbar was subjected to disparate treatment and disparate impact discrimination on the basis of his race. The 45 page filing reads on information and belief, non-minority employees similarly situated were not subject to termination when they refused the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, if the race argument doesn't even work with them, they must've been very, very, very strict with their policy. You know what I mean? I mean, Letitia Wright kind of went there if yeah. I recall correctly. She was talking about, you know, her her rights to bodily sovereignty, but also in the context of her race. Yeah. And being specifically marginalized in Hollywood for her race. And she got a lot of pushback when uh, when she posted videos about it. Uh, she she posted a lot of stuff about like like uh, the the U.S. government has never been kind to African Americans right. here. But that's really not related to the issue at hand in my opinion i think they were just grasping at straws yeah because they didn't think that there would be any other grounds they'd be exempted on yeah so it's just i i don't like the the fact that they're trying to make it out like she said something brave and stunning and that she's a, a hero for freedom and sovereignty like well, i said she's a <laughs> to be lifelong... fair, she's getting a lot of pushback on this like people are in the comments saying you went off the deep end yeah i was actually surprised when you're saying she's getting celebrated for this like yeah maybe in conservative circles but well, like that's maybe by immediate... breitbart yeah, yeah but yeah. in her immediate uh community and profession i'm sure she's not which again I have to argue, like, why? Why do you even bring this up at all? Yeah. Basically, a year and a half too late. Like, you don't get credit by some people. You're still going to get, you know, dismembered by people who feel like this is a terrible stance to take and vaccines are critical to whatever, public safety. Yeah. Like, I just don't understand the... It's not even that... I, I think she is expressing a correct... Or, like, a, a sentiment that I sympathize with. But, like, why now? Mm -hmm. Here's another tweet from uh, one of her detractors saying, shame we lost Fran Drescher that way. She's alive. She's just out here siding with a giant corporation instead of the health and safety of her union members and calling private vaccine mandates fascism. Now, it's really ironic to say she's siding with a giant corporation. Of course, Disney is that. But they were you, you're the asking you're before. asking her to either side with Disney or side with Pfizer. Either way, you are somehow showing an allegiance to, to a mega corporation. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> Pfizer's marketing team just really nailed it with the vaccine, getting it to be like we're doing this for you guys are doing it for one another. We're yeah. doing it to keep people safe. Like, this is our product. Not, <laughs> we, we just happen to sell it. But like, actually, this is just for the common good. Like, we we're objective this. third party. In fact, it's free for you. It's free because the government's paying for it. But it's free. Just do it. It's the right thing. Well, now you have to pay for it. But it's actually for everyone you know and loves protection. Like, Disney didn't stand a chance of that kind of marketing. That's not going to end either, too. Because I think back to like the the world we live in now. When we talk about people, um, there, there's like a lot of like, well, what what does it cost you to to uh, acknowledge someone's pronouns to seed way to speak the way people tell you to does it does it hurt you does it hurt you everything we do is kind of from this place of seeding territory on the basis of being polite to others and never about like what you believe in for yourself and so in a guilt-ridden society a great way to sell a product is to say that if you don't get it you're a bad person People are using this as an opportunity to point out all of their other issues and beefs with Fran Drescher and the political opinions they think she has. There's just people that have hated her for years. Who are no, just literally like, there are. Like someone posted about how she's anti-Palestinian and she well, donated she, money to the IDF. And I was like, how is this She has to have all relevant? the correct opinions <laughs> on every topic. And we talked about this yesterday. Uh, there is no such thing anymore of you should not even really believe that you can do any type of like global globalist marketing because at least one person in every group will have one view that everybody hates and you're never going to have the perfect opinion in fact i would argue that the people that the, if there are those people that just happen to have exactly the right opinion on everything that is the most suspicious person out of all of them that are you just a wet blanket that has absolutely no spine or and, you don't have any convictions other than fame and you know, yeah, being exactly. well known so you don't care about these things you're just saying the things you know will get you support exactly but a so, lot of people fall for it like they create lists in their head of here are the celebrities that i approve of that are good people trademark yeah and here are the celebrities that 
uh, should be deplatformed, have no career opportunities, and be silenced forever. I think of like Chris Evans as somebody who's just like he's just the he's just got the good takes on everything. It's he's got the takes that everybody, isn't it? He's like I support this, I support this. Like somehow he supports Israel and Palestine. Somehow he supports this and this. Like you know what I mean? Like he couldn't like they find a way to never be offensive in any way, shape, or form. But they do it while still talking out. Like. I imagine that Keanu Reeves has at least one or two things that people disagree with him on, but he's smart enough to just not talk about it or not talk on. Even Keanu Reeves, Brett. I love Keanu. Reeves. I know you do. Me and me and Mary got into it yesterday. Well, no, 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 <laughs> not. not. Well, we, I love the framing we, that we got into it. He's like, defending Keanu Reeves' honor. I, I will defend his him. honor. I will defend his I honor. I was comparing it to Bill Murray because he finds Bill Murray's quirky persona persona uh, suspicious and annoying. But, like, Keanu Reeves has the same, like, wholesome 100, big chungus energy. <laughs> Brett does not tolerate anyone questioning Keanu Reeves. He has a new, in Keanu Reeves, we trust poster hanging in his room. Exactly. exactly. You know? That and Tom Cruise. Yeah, no, you can criticize Tom Cruise. He's said, he's said and done plenty of weird stuff. In his career. I just okay, think that, there's, uh, that his benefit for the industry is stronger than uh, a Ultimately, lot of Ultimately, Brett's going to keep him around. <laughs> yes. Uh, he's a, he's I, on thin ice. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've measured the I've, done the... I've done the research. Tom Cruise, he's a net positive. So, Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.